Okay, so we are going to be starting with this shelf up here. And yeah, I try to keep all of my fragrances arranged by house if possible. So yeah, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get going. I'm gonna zoom way in. <laughs> Is this thing would give me trouble if not so and i hope the lighting is okay on this i just have no idea what the lighting is going to be like okay so the first one we have here is we're going to start with lolita limpica um this is lolita limpica this is lolita limpica elixir sublime sorry my my camera does not like to focus on shiny things um yeah elixir sublime this is a really beautiful version of lolita limpica in fact it might be like my favorite version of it aside from the original it just has this really beautiful creamy vanilla aspect to it or it smells just like the original lolita limpica it just i don't know it's like lolita limpica with a really creamy um it's just really creamy it's just beautiful i love it i'm so glad i picked this one up um to me the Lolita Limpica fragrances and all the flankers, they're just like alien to me. They all smell like the original. Um, I don't think that I've smelled one yet that doesn't really have that original heart. Um, so yeah, I love this one. That's the Elixir Sublime. Next we have got, uh, this is Lolita Limpica Le Parfum. And... This one, I'm gonna have to spray this. Oh, this one's beautiful. This one smells, this one definitely smells just like the original too, but this one's a little bit sweeter. Um, yeah, it's not creamy like the last one we just saw, but it's, I don't know, it's sweeter. And I love this bottle, this beautiful like metallic purple bottle oh it's so beautiful so anyways that is uh, lolita limpica le parfum next we've got just the original lolita limpica this is a big 3.4 ounce bottle i've got mm, i think i've got about 40 percent left i love this fragrance um yeah so the to me the original has a green aspect to it whereas the last two that i just showed you they don't they don't have that green kind of quality to it the way that this one does the licorice is definitely really really strong in this one too it's definitely got that really strong licorice note i love these bottles they're just so pretty these are like the original um apple bottles they're gorgeous and then the last one of these that i have is this one here this is the lolita limpica um eau de toilette and i actually picked this one up because of rose and jones i've heard her talk about it um quite a bit in a lot of the earlier videos on her channel she does talk about this fragrance quite a bit and she just I don't know it always she just made it sound so amazing and it is so amazing it's such a beautiful formulation um oh yes this is like a warm weather version of lolita limpica it's i don't know it's just so much lighter and fresher smelling it's definitely still got that licorice note in it but it's not um it's not like um it's not as heavy as the original, and this one has a really beautiful green quality to it as well. I just love it. I love these bottles. So anyways, those are all of my original Lolita Limpica fragrances. Next we've got this guy. I love this one so much. This is Lolita Land. Yeah, let's see if I can get it to where you can see the actual word. So that is Lolita Land. I love the cap on this one. It's so pretty with the deer that has wings and the flower. It's just so, so pretty. This is a beautiful, oh my gosh, this one is so good. And mine has gotten so much better with the age too. Mine has gotten so much richer smelling. 
like the vanilla in it has really deepened up. Um, this to me, this smells like a really creamy peach and vanilla fragrance. I love it. When we get to another one on the shelf, it reminds me of this one, but this one's way more complex and way more beautiful in my opinion. Um, my husband loves this fragrance. So anyways, that is Lolita Lempica Lolita Land. Okay, next I have, this is Lolita Lempica El Lame. This is the EDT formulation. And I these, these fragrances right now are kind of on the chopping block. Um, I'm trying to figure out if I want to keep them in my collection or not. Yeah, I love how these smell, I just, I can't smell them on me at all. These are those kinds of fragrance, or this is the type of fragrance that I'll spray it on and like literally five minutes later, I can't smell it on myself at all. I think I'm like anosmic to them maybe because yeah, I just have a really hard time smelling these on me. And then I've got the EDP formulation, which you can see is darker. Um, and the gold is darker on this bottle. This one's really beautiful. It has a very gorgeous combination of coconut and myrrh in it, which I absolutely adore, but I just cannot get it. I don't know, I just can't get it to work on me. And I just, um, I just tested it again last week sometime and yeah, I just couldn't, couldn't smell it, even in the cold weather. I thought maybe it would be better as a cold weather fragrance for me, it's just not. So yeah, next we've got some Stella fragrances. So this is Stella Pop Bluebell. I love this fragrance. It's one of my favorite Stella McCartney fragrances. Um, I'm one of those people that has loved almost everything Stella McCartney has come out with. And I just love this. Um, it's just a slightly sweet, kind of green, crisp, light floral. It's an easy fragrance. It's an easy to reach for fragrance. I'm so glad I've got this huge bottle since all of her perfumes have, to, have been discontinued. It's just such a beautiful, actual Bluebell fragrance. And we've got Pop Bluebell. I love this one too. I don't love it quite as much as Bluebell, but I do still love this. This is, um, I think this is synthetic tuberose, synthetic sandalwood. It's got some other things in it, but those I think are the most prominent notes. Um, I love it. I wish I had the same size bottle. I wish I had the big, huge bottle in this. Yes, I love it. Again, very slightly sweet, very easy to wear, just an easy to reach for fragrance. I love this one in the spring. It's just really beautiful and I love these bottles. I think they're super, super cute. All right, next we've got all my Stella's, all my versions of Stella. Um, so this is the original formula, not the, sorry, this is just the original Stella EDP. This is the 2014 reformulated version, um, which it does still smell the same, it just doesn't perform the same. Um, and it's just a little bit, it's just a little bit lacking um, the depth that it used to have. Um, I still love it though. I still love it. It still smells incredible to me, even the reformulated version. Thank goodness it didn't get butchered. It's just not quite as long lasting or deep or rich as it used to be. Love it though. Beautiful rose and amber fragrance. I've got the EDP formulation. I love this one too. This really is just like a lighter version. It's lighter, more crisp. Um, this one smells a little bit like a shampoo-y kind of fragrance. It's not, it's not like hardcore shampoo-y, but a little bit. It's got a touch of a shampoo-y quality to it, uh, where the original doesn't. It's just a lovely, lovely fragrance, and I just adore this bottle. I think it's so cute. 
And then I have got Stella Nude. So this is Stella with a really, really beautiful Madagascar vanilla note in it. And I found this on Mercari and I snatched it up because it's, ugh, it's perfect. It's such a beautiful, ugh. yeah, it's such a beautiful version of Stella. It's cleaner, it's lighter, it's got that beautiful vanilla note in it. It's just stunning, but it's still, and it's got a little bit of a soapiness to it. This one has a little bit of a soapy quality, whereas the original doesn't. Yeah, and this is one I need to put away in a dark cabinet because I'm afraid of what's going to happen to it if I don't. Okay, next I have this one. This is Stella Rose Absolute Eau de Parfum Intense. Um, this one I do keep in its box. Yeah, I am unable to look up because Stella McCartney fragrances sold out to somebody else. I want to say maybe L'Oreal or somebody else like that. Um, and you can't look up the batch codes anymore. So I can't look up to see what year mine are from. This is a tester bottle, which I'm so <laughs> happy. It is a tester bottle since I fully believe that testers are made better than the original perfumes now. I really am a believer in that um, after my experience last week. So I am so happy to know I have a tester. So again, that is Stella Rose Absolute Eau de Parfum Intense. Okay, next, uh, moving on to Mugler. I have got Mugler. This is Angel Muse. My, um, my cap is doing something weird. I don't know if you guys can see where it's kind of like wrinkled up. Like the foil over my cap has wrinkled up. It's really, really strange. Again, my camera has a hard time focusing on shiny stuff. So anyways, this is really beautiful. This is a sweeter, um, it's a little bit lighter than Angel. It's sweeter and it's got this really beautiful hazelnut note in it. Actually, it's like a hazelnut chat. It's, it says hazelnut chocolate spread, I think. Oh, yeah. I love this. This is an absolute beast. It's just beautiful. Love this. So happy to have that one in my collection. Uh, next, we've got Alien Goddess. This is the newest alien that came out. Um, this is either <laughs> you love it or you hate it. I happen to love it. A lot of people got mad that it doesn't smell anything like Alien, and it really doesn't. Um, some people say that they feel like it smells like Alien in the dry down. Um, the Jasmine, they can smell Alien in the Jasmine in the dry down. Um, I didn't really get any of that. I, did, I mean, I didn't get Alien at all when I wore this, but I do love it. It does still have Jasmine in it, but this is like a beachy fragrance. Um, it's definitely not groundbreaking. It's definitely up there with like Bobby Brown Beach, uh, Terracotta. Um, yeah, just any of those like beachy fragrances, it's definitely in that realm. But I love it. It's beachy florals, coconut or coconut water, something like that. Uh, just beautiful. Next we have got Alien Essence Absolute. I love this. This is like a, it's like alien, but if you added like cola to it, it's like cola alien. It's really beautiful and that, my liquid is so dark. It's beautiful. I do love this. This is another one that I need to put away. Um, just because I'm afraid that if I keep it out in any kind of light at all that it will start to turn. It still smells incredible though. It still smells exactly the way it did when I got it years ago. Next we've got just the original Alien. I love this one. Um, my liquid has darkened up so much. Like you can see how dark it I think it's dark liquid anyways to begin with. 
but mine is like really, really dark now. I mean, you can even see it on the camera. You can see how dark it, that liquid is in that dark bottle. Um, yeah, thankfully this is the original formulation of Alien. Um, I've had people tell me that they've purchased it since L'Oreal took over and that, it, it, that it's not the same, that it doesn't last, which is crazy because Alien is one of the longest lasting fragrances in my collection, like hands down. Um, this can put some of my do off fragrances to shame, like seriously, it's that crazy. So I hate to hear that it's not like that anymore. But yeah, I love that. Okay, next we have Alien, The Taste of Fragrance. And this is Alien with caramel in it. Um, it's a little, it's a little less intense. Um, it definitely doesn't compare to like Alien Essence Absolute. Essence Absolute has that really beautiful kind of cola fragrance. Um, this one doesn't. This one is just, it's Alien, but it's a little bit sweeter. It's more, uh, it's smoother, a little bit more well-rounded. Um, yeah, it's just got that caramel in it. I'm not going to lie. To me, this is not different enough from the original Alien that I think anybody like needs it in their collection. I am certainly certainly glad to have it, but I don't feel like I need it necessarily. I do love it though. It's just a really beautiful, and it's a beast. It's an absolute beast. So yeah, that is Alien, uh, The Taste of Fragrance. And then the last Alien that I have in my collection is this one here. This is Alien Eau Sublime. Yeah. Yeah, Alien Eau Sublime. This was like the original beachy version of Alien. It doesn't have the coconut in it, I don't think. Let me spray this. Um, uh, yeah, it doesn't have the coconut in it the way that Goddess does. So it's a different kind of beachy. It's much more just like beachy florals. Um, Jasmine, I think this one has frangipani in it. Um, possibly tiare, one of those. It's just the beachy florals, not necessarily like a beachy coconut fragrance. It's beautiful. It's one of my favorite versions of Alien. So anyways, that is Alien, and this is a tester bottle, which I was so glad uh, to have, definitely. So anyways, that is Mugler Alien Eau Sublime. And then I only have one version of Angel in my collection. I do have a mini of the original Angel, but this is the only full bottle of Angel that I own. This is my favorite formulation I've ever smelled. This is the EDT formulation. And this one is just a lot lighter, brighter. It's just got this really beautiful top that is full of berries. So it's like this gorgeous, uh, yes, it's like this gorgeous kind of icy berry and chocolate fragrance. I love it. It's much more wearable than the original and I just adore it. It's like berries and chocolate and patchouli. It's so yum. So anyways, that is the uh, that is Angel EDT. Okay, I'm going to quickly go through all my Dua fragrances. I don't want to spend too much time on all of them because um, I just did my whole Dua collection not too terribly long ago, so I won't spend too much time. Uh, this is the, so the first one is this one here. This is Takes Two to Tango. This is a clone of Mask Milano Tango. Really beautiful, dark, dark amber. Probably the darkest amber I've got in my collection. Uh, next, we have got Amberlicious Cherry. This is a beautiful clone of Tom Ford's Lost Cherry and Hermes Ombre Nargile. Really, really beautiful. I love it. It smells exactly like both of them mixed together, and it's an incredible fragrance. It's so good. Next, we have got Crater. My husband used the absolute heck out of this. You can see he used a ton of it. He went through a phase where he loved this fragrance. 
Um, this is a clone of Maison Francis Kirkjian Grand Soir. Really beautiful amber. It's a masculine leaning amber too. And then next we've got Amberlicious. This is a one for one clone of Ombre Nargile from Hermes. It's, I have tested them side by side and there's, like you honestly can't tell the difference. Especially in the deep dry down, there's literally no difference. So if you're somebody who always want, who has always wanted Ombre Nargile, but it's just the cost is too prohibitive, um, I can tell you this is an amazing clone of it. Oh, it's so good. My liquid has turned green on this though, and I have no idea why. I don't know what is in this that made it turn green, but it still smells amazing. Okay, next we have Succulent. This is a clone of Slumber House Pear and Olive. This is beautiful. It's got, like, you can almost smell an oiliness. It's got, like, an oily smell to it, which is very strange. Um, it's like stewed... It's like if you stewed pears in olive oil. It's such a weird, it's hard for me to explain this one. Um, I have had one person buy this after they heard me talk about it and she did not like it at all. So yeah, it's definitely not a safe blind buy. Um, it's a very, very unique fragrance. So that is succulent. Next, this is one of my favorite duo fragrances of all time. This is such a gorgeous fragrance, and it is one of the longest lasting fragrances in my collection, hands down. This will, wa this will stay on you until you wash it off, and even sometimes once you get out of the shower, you can still smell it, like it won't wash off. <laughs> it's crazy long lasting. This is Caribbean Casino, and this is a clone of Creed Virgin Island Water and Baccarat Rouge 540. It's beautiful. Ugh, I love it. It's like Baccarat Rouge 540, but with like lime and coconut. It's incredible. I love it. I had a, a, a friend here in town who was over one night and she was smelling a bunch of my perfume. She's not even that into perfume. And she smelled that one and she immediately ordered it. <laughs> she had to have it because it's so beautiful. Okay, Dua makes incredible apple fragrances. This first one is called Palm Fire, and this is a clone of By the Fireplace and Killian Apple Brandy. It's beautiful. It's like By the Fireplace. Ugh, yeah, By the Fireplace, but add a boozy apple note. It's crazy good. I love it. I've been through a ton of this. I did make a decant of this one for my mom, but I also have used a ton because... Not this past fall, but the fall before, I was like obsessed with this fragrance. I was wearing it like crazy. And then next we have, this is Palm Trempe. This is the one for one clone of Killian Apple Brandy. This is a beautiful, boozy, woody apple. Um, it's funny, I have like this, the tiniest little dents in these but it's because these fragrances are so strong you really don't have to spray that much so these bottles are gonna last me like my whole life but yeah this is beautiful i haven't worn this as much as the others but i did wear this to the apple orchard this past year or this past fall and it was such a good choice <laughs> really beautiful okay next we have caramel palm delight this is, again, Killian Apple Brandy and Zerjoff Lyra. So this is much more Lyra than it is Killian Apple Brandy, though. So it's like Lyra, but if you added a little bit of an apple note to it, it's beautiful. You can see I love their apple fragrances. But again, this one is much more Lyra than it is uh, Apple Brandy. There's just the slightest bit of apple in it. It's so good. So anyways, that is Caramel Palm Delight. Next we've got Herbs and Sea Salt. This is a one-for-one one clone of Jim Malone Wood Sage and Sea Salt. Um, I went through a whole 30 ml bottle of Wood Sage and Sea Salt one summer, I think it was, 
and I loved it, but it just, I went through the whole bottle in one summer because I had to reapply it all the time. It just did not last long on me. So I love having the Dua version because I like this one a little bit better as far as how it smells and it lasts so much better. So I love it. Oh, yes, it's such a good, good clone. So that is herbs and sea salt. Okay, next we have uh, Intense Om. Okay, next we have Intense Om. And this is a clone of Dior Om Intense. Um, I love this fragrance. I have tested this next to the Dior. And there are some differences, definitely. Um, the Deep Dry Down is it's pretty darn close. But there definitely are some differences getting to the Deep Dry Down but I don't mind because I basically have the same experience with this as I do with the Dior. Um, even though I still want a bottle of Dior Om Intense, I still, I will probably end up buying a bottle at some point, but I do love it. It's like a beautiful powdery iris fragrance, but like a masculine leaning iris fragrance, which is really nice. Okay, and then this one, holy cow, you guys, is this thing a spice bomb now? This is a Drowning in Vanilla. This is a clone of Nishane Ani. And look at like my lid. My lid is brown. I mean, the spices have turned my lid brown. It's crazy. It is so crazy intense now. I mean, this fragrance is crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh, but it is so good. Like, Ugh, everything about this has gotten more intense. The spices, the vanilla, everything. It's like a super fiery, spicy, dark vanilla fragrance. I love it. I'm so glad I hung on to that one because I almost didn't. I didn't like it when I first got it. And as it's aged, it has gotten crazy good. So anyways, that is Drowning in Vanilla. I've got so many Dua fragrances. I didn't realize how many I had. Okay, next we have got Iris Cafe. This is a clone of Guerlain Iris Torfe, if that's how you say that. I have not even given this one a really good wear test yet. I really need to. Really beautiful fragrance. Next, we have got Mernilla Delight. I found this one on Mercari, and it was a good find. It is, um, oh gosh. I think this is supposed to, I can't remember if this is supposed to be a clone for Jemalone Murantanka, or if it's its own thing. Um, I cannot remember, but it might be a clone for Murantanka. Yeah, it looks like it's got Mer whipped cream and coffee on the label. So it's a good one, really beautiful. Oh, next we've got Tonkalicious. This is another one. This is a clone of Guerlain Tonka Imperial. And this one has gotten incredible. I have not even given this one a good wear test either. It has aged so beautifully. I mean, it's amazing. I'm so, so excited to give this one a good test which I will do soon, and I'll talk about it in a What I Wore Last Week video. And then last but not least, I've got this beauty. This is Dark Chocolate Rum and Vanilla. This is a clone of Guerlain Gourmand Coquine, if that's how you say that. Um, you can see what a dent I've put in this little thing already, and I've only worn it like twice because I will say this is probably the worst performer in my Dua collection but I don't care because I love it. It has deepened up so much since I got it, and the chocolate is so beautiful in this one. I just love this, and it is like gorgeous, almost bitter, but still sweet, dark chocolate note. Oh, it's so good. I love this. So that is dark chocolate rum and vanilla. Actually, I shouldn't say it's the worst performing. I wore it a couple times right after I got it, before I let it sit and macerate for a few months. 
so it definitely wasn't as strong as it is now so again I'll give this one a good wear and then I'll put it in a what I wore last week video and I'll update you guys on how this um, on how this performs now that it has sat for months at this point so anyways that is dark chocolate rum and vanilla and those are all of the duo fragrances that I have oh I skipped a little one I had a little one off sitting there by itself this is the body shop white musk smoky rose um, this is really beautiful um, this is probably the closest thing I've ever smelled to something actually smelling like Stella but it still doesn't smell like Stella to me um, it's like a really really sweet version of Stella it's a really sweet rose it's beautiful but it's a dark rose the way Stella is um, and a modern rose <sighs> yeah the way Stella is it's got a little bit of a touch of like an incense vibe to it I just love this one this one is really hard to find now so I am gonna hold on to this like with my life <laughs> because it's I love it so anyways that is white musk smoky rose from the body shop okay another little guy sitting here by itself is this one here this is atelier de or or atelier de ors however you say it um, this is Lune Feline I picked this one up off of one of the Canadian websites I got it for like a screaming deal it was really inexpensive like I don't know 130 maybe but yeah really beautiful very very spicy cardamom heavy vanilla this is a beast though I love it and this bottle is super super heavy and gorgeous so anyways that is Lune Feline all right let's start into Burberry so I've got the original Burberry here this is just Burberry woman or just Burberry for her um, this is a vintage bottle because I can't stand the new formulation of this. They put way too much peach in it now. Um, this one, uh, I love this. This is an old signature of mine that actually predates even Stella. I wore this before I started wearing Stella. Um, and I just remember when I used to wear it as like a signature, it just reminded me of wearing like a cozy sweater I just felt like I was spraying on a cozy sweater every time I wore it um, it's got a touch of peach in it but the vintage formulation has just a touch it's not like sickening the way that it is to me now so yeah I love this old signature I had to get a bird of uh, oh my goodness I had to get a vintage bottle all right next I have Burberry London for her this is a beautiful, very classy. You'll see this in another part of my collection too because I've got two bottles of this now. Um, but very beautiful, very classy, sweet floral. Strong, this thing's a beast, like most Burberry fragrances. I say that and then we'll get to the one that is not, not a super beast. This is Burberry Brit Red. I love this fragrance. I usually wear this around Christmas time. Um, it just reminds me of Christmas fruit tarts, um, like spiced Christmas fruit tarts. This has a really beautiful rhubarb note in it, but it's a very fresh, realistic rhubarb. Um, it's very, it's almost astringent smelling. So it keeps this fragrance from being super sweet. This is just a very unique fragrance like super unique I've never smelled anything like this before and I've never smelled rhubarb used in such a way either I just think that it's so stunning so anyways that is Burberry Brit Red next we have another beautiful sweet floral this is Burberry the Beat yeah Burberry the Beat this is the Eau de Parfum really really gorgeous um i think dominique gropion made this one if i remember correctly and it's just a gorgeous sweet floral yes 
it's a beautiful sweet floral it's got a little bit of a um, cleanliness to it and a little bit of a sweet shampoo vibe to it I just love it it's gorgeous super underrated little gem there Okay, next we have Burberry Brit Rhythm. This is gorgeous. This fragrance reminds me of a new mom. It reminds me of somebody that just had a baby and they just smell like a new mom. Um, something about this gives me like diaper cream vibes, but in not in a bad way, in like such a good way. Um, it just smells beautiful. It smells super fresh, clean, powdery. It smells like a new mom, like a new baby, like a new mom and her baby. <laughs> Let's just say that. It's gorgeous. Powdery lavender. Stunning. I love it. I'm so glad I have a huge bottle of it. And then next, we have Burberry Brit EDP formulation. Um, this is another one. Oh, I love this fragrance. This is another one. I have not spent enough time with this one. Um, I went through a phase where I just was trying to collect as many Burberry fragrances as I can find, as I could find, because I love them. And yeah, I I did not when I picked this one up. I did not spend enough time with it, so I don't know that I've even given this one a really good full wear test. Um, Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. I'm pretty sure this one has pear in it. I'm quite sure it's got pear in it. It's like a beautiful honeyed pear and floral fragrance. It's stunning. I love it. So yeah, I need to pull this one out and give it some love. So that is Burberry Brit EDP. And then last but not least for Burberry, we have got Burberry Body Eau de Parfum Intense. This is a huge bottle. <laughs> like not gonna fit on the screen this is a beautiful soapy rose fragrance um, yeah it's this one reminds me of my Burberry um, it's got that same kind of intensity and class to it but it's like my Burberry if you way amped up the rose in it so it's like a rose my Burberry it's just beautiful. This is one of my favorite bottles in my collection too. I just think this looks so fancy. I don't know why, but I do. I just think it looks so super fancy and beautiful. Like to sit on a vanity. It's just stunning. So anyways, that is Burberry, Burberry Body Eau de Parfum Intense. All right, on to YSL. First, we've got YSL Cinema. This is... This is the EDP formulation. I love this. This is a really beautiful floral vanilla. Maybe the like I don't know that I have another floral vanilla in my in my collection like this. Um, yeah, it's just beautiful. It is a very flower heavy vanilla, and it's gorgeous. The only thing about this one, it does not last at all on me. I have tested this in summer, winter, spring, and it just doesn't last, but I don't care. I adore it. I need to pull this one out and give it some love. So anyways, that is why I sell Cinema Eau de Parfum. Next, I've got a couple bottles of Manifesto. So this is the first little bottle. This is just a little baby. I think it's a one, let's see here, yeah. Um, this is just a 30 ml bottle. This is my oldest bottle, and I love this. Look how dark that liquid is. The Tonka has gotten so intense in it, and this that's what this is to me. This is like a predominantly Tonka fragrance, which I adore. So yeah, that is my first bottle. I did have three bottles. I sent one off to my beautiful perfume friend because she hadn't smelled it before, and she loved it, so I was so happy about that. It's just such a beautiful fragrance. And then recently I found this guy on Mercari. This is a, this is the um, 2012 red edition of Manifesto. And this was still, the, the box was still sealed up when I got this. So it had never seen the light of day. And look how light the liquid is. 
It's got a long way to go before it deepens up like my other bottle, but that is okay. I love it. It's so beautiful. So yeah, I found that for like a screaming steal on Mercari and I had to have it. Plus I heard that Manifesto is being discontinued, so I'm so glad to have a backup bottle. Okay, on to Libre. I've got four bottles of Libre. So this is the original formulation of, of Libre, the first one that came out. This is the Eau de Parfum. And this is such a stunning fragrance. Like it leaves this beautiful, I mean, it's so thick it almost leaves like I don't know, it's hard to explain. It leaves itself on the glass because it's so thick. It's gorgeous, I love this one. Um, I fell in love with this when this first came out. It's stunning, it's sweet, and it's got like a honeyed quality to it, and it's lavender, and some flowers, and I just love it. So that is the original formulation, the ADP. And then I've got the EDT as well. I just picked this one up from Ulta this past summer and I love this one too. It's just, it's a, it's a much lighter version of Libre. It's like perfect for spring and summer. It still smells like Libre, but it's um, much lighter. Definitely more suitable for heat. It's gorgeous. And then I've got two bottles. I'm so thankful. Somebody just sent me over another backup bottle of this. This is my favorite version of Libre. This is Libre Intense. And it really is just, oh my gosh, it really is just an intense version of Libre. This one really has like a warm, like honeyed quality to it. It's beautiful. Everything in it is more intense though. It's more lavender, more, it's sweeter, it's richer, it's darker. It's like more of everything. So that was my original bottle. And then a beautiful subscriber just sent me over this bottle, which is turning into a backup bottle. And I'm so happy to have it because I am crazy for this fragrance, like crazy for it. So anyways, that is why I sell Libre Intense. Okay, so this is SJP NYC. This is one of my favorite Sarah Jessica Parker fragrances. It's definitely my favorite fragrance that I've ever smelled with a strawberry note. Um, it's got, uh, I love it. It's got a wild strawberry note, so it doesn't smell like a synthetic, you know, syrupy strawberry. It smells like I don't know, it's it's way more of like unique smelling strawberry, but I really, really enjoy this. And this is a beast on me. This is a fruity fragrance. One of the only fruity fragrances that I actually really, really love. And one of the only ones that lasts a really long time on me. So anyways, that is SJP NYC. Next we have SJP NYC. This is Pure Crush. This is a really beautiful watery coconut fragrance. So yeah, this one is, it's just a really beautiful, it's got like a little bit of a green quality to it. Oh, it's pretty. It's like a fresh coconut too. It's like a fresh, slightly sweet coconut water. Just a really beautiful, light, fresh, watery coconut. This just slightly sweet. Such a beautiful fragrance. Okay, next we've got one lone little Michael Kors sitting up there by himself. This is Michael Kors Midnight Shimmer. This is um, this is a really beautiful, like sweet, slightly fruity vanilla. This one reminds me a little bit of Lolita Land from Lolita Lampica. It doesn't have peach in it, but it kind of smells like it does. Um, but it's like, I don't know, it's just this really beautiful, kind of thick smelling, sweet vanilla. So anyways, that is Michael Kors Midnight Shimmer. Okay, next we've got this beauty. Um, my beautiful fragrance friend, she sent me over a decant of this and I fell in love with it. And so she immediately had a bottle sent over to me, which I was so, so grateful. Um, this is such a beautiful fragrance. This is from Parfums Wheel and it's called Sookie Essence. I love this bottle. This is such a beautiful, creamy, very slightly sweet, spiced fragrance. It's so slightly sweet that the sweetness really just, it almost keeps it from being like a super fiery, spicy fragrance. 
Um, it's creamy. It's beautiful. She said it smell. She said that it smells exactly like an Indian chai. And she makes Indian chai, so she said she definitely knows that, you know what it smells like, and she said it smells exactly like it. So, uh, I love having something in my collection that makes me smell like an Indian chai. It's beautiful. So anyways, that is Suki Essence from Perfumes Wheel. I love it. Okay, this next one is funny. This is the only fragrance in my collection that, ha that I have that is like a super bad knockoff. Um, this is the brand that you can pick up, I think, at Five Below. And I've never seen this one at my Five Below, but I think I, think I have people... I have had people tell me that they have seen it at their Five Below. But anyways, I picked mine up off of Mercari. And um, I really picked it up because I was just, I was so curious as to what Scandal by Night smelled like. But I didn't want to blind buy a bottle because it's quite expensive. So I thought, well, I'll just get this knockoff. It'll give me an idea of what it smells like. Well, I ended up have getting a sample of Scandal by Night and I sprayed this on next to it and this is like this is like an actual really good knockoff you guys it's actually really good um that's why I keep this one yes that's why I keep this one because it's actually really good so unfortunately the entire Scandal line just does not work on me but this knockoff does so yeah I keep it it's a really really good clone of Scandal by Night it's definitely not, it doesn't have the quality that the real Scandal by Night does. It's not as rich, it's not as, um, you know, it definitely doesn't smell as high quality, but it's definitely a really good alternative. And if you can find it at Five Below for $5, it's definitely worth it. So anyways, that is called G for Women Sexy Night. Okay, and then let's get on to some real Jean-Paul Gaultier's. First one I have here is called Gautier 2 or Gautier Squared. Um, this is a beautiful amber fragrance. And I got turned on to this by a beautiful subscriber from Italy. She sent over a ton of decants. And this is one of the decants she, saw, she sent. And after I tested it, I had to have a bottle. So I hunted down a bottle. It was very expensive but I don't care. I'm super glad to have it in my collection. It's a beautiful amber. It's like vanilla amber and one other note. Um, it's only three notes, I believe. And then I also picked up this massage oil thinking that I could use this to layer the perfume over, but this smells terrible. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's just like it's gone off or something. It smells so bad. So now I just keep it for the bottle because I do think it's a really cute little bottle. All right, next I have, uh, this is the original LaBelle. I love this. I want the one with the big collar of flowers though. I think it's so gorgeous. Mine just has this little, um, like the little stopper that's the flower. But look at the color of my liquid. This used to be the most beautiful, like light pink, um, kind of light pink lavender color and it has deepened up so much, probably from the vanilla, which I don't mind at all, because I love it when my perfumes get darker because they're getting richer. Um, I love it. This is such a beautiful fragrance. This is pear, vetiver, um, and vanilla, and it's gorgeous. This is one of the only lines from Jean-Paul Gaultier that actually worked for me. The original Classique works really well, but I've never found a Classique flanker that worked well on me. Um, yeah. So I'm in love with these fragrances because not only do they smell amazing, not only are they some of my highest compliment getters in my collection, they're just, I'm so excited that they're a Jean-Paul Gaultier fragrance that works on me. So anyways, that is LaBelle. And next we have LaBelle Intense. This is beautiful. This is, it really does smell very, very much like the original LaBelle, but just much more intense in every way. It's more pear, it's more vanilla, it's more of everything. It's creamier, it's richer, it's darker, it's longer lasting, it's more intense. 
even though LaBelle is a beast on me too, this one was, I think, even more so. Just crazy, and I love these bottles. I hate that this one didn't even come with a stopper, though. It didn't come with anything, but the bottle in, but in itself is gorgeous. That is LaBelle Intense. And then last but not least on this shelf is this one here from Lanvin. This is Lanvin Modern Princess. And I'm a huge fan of Lanvin fragrances. This one is gorgeous. If you like apple, this is probably my number one apple fragrance. This is like apple and cream. Oh my gosh, yes. It's like sweet apple and cream. It reminds me a lot of Victoria's Secret Oh So Sexy, but this one smells better. It smells like better quality and everything. It lasts a much longer. This one lasts much longer than Oh So Sexy too. I do have a roller ball of Oh So Sexy and it doesn't last as long as Salon Bin. And this one is just, oh my gosh, it's just beautiful. Creamy, sweet apple. Like it almost smells like it could have a caramel note in it. It doesn't but it smells like it could. It's beautiful. This is an underrated gem for sure. So anyways, that is Lanvin Modern Princess. And that is going to be it, guys. That is it for part one. Next, next for part two, we will go over, let me back you out here. We will go over this shelf here for part two. And then we'll move on down the line until we get to the bottom <laughs> so anyways guys i do hope you enjoyed this if you did don't forget to give it a big thumbs up don't forget to subscribe before you leave and i will see you guys in my next one bye